Hello and welcome to another video by me, Joe Onwin, also known as Flo Joe. Today we've got something super exciting to look at, and that is AI Builder. Because now in the Power Platform, you can actually create a prompt library that is usable by yourself and anyone else in your organization that you share it with. And it works on Power Automate, which we're looking at today. It works on Copilot Studio, as well as Power Apps. And I'm sure down the road, there'll be more and more and more technologies using this as well from Microsoft. So how do we use this? Where do we get started? And what examples am I gonna be showing you? Well, I'm gonna be using Power Automate as the example, but if you're using this on Power Apps or Copilot Studio or any other thing in the future, you're going to be basically following the same procedure because it's still built on the same technology, which is AI Builder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the um, Power Automate starter page. And on the left hand side, there is the AI model section. So if you click on that, what you're going to be presented with is you're going to be presented with um, a section of your models. Uh, you've got the shared with me, all models, uh, my models and all that type of stuff. But what I'm going to show you here, right, is we haven't got any models right now. And if you look at the top left, it says prompts now have its own section. So if you click on that, you'll see my prompts shared with me and all prompts. Now, I do not have a prompt created right now, so I've got none here. But if I click on the shared with me, I've got all of the system prompts. Now, all of these are shared with everyone. And these are out of the box type of prompts that you get um, directly with AI Builder and the prompt library. But as you can see here, if I had a list of prompts here, and I've got the shared with me stuff, I've now got an actual prompt library that I can use. But if I click on all prompts, then it lists my prompts and shared with me all in one location. So you now have an inbuilt prompt library for the Power Platform, especially Power Automate as I'm showing you. So how do we actually create a prompt? If you click on this build an AI model down here, what that's going to do is it's going to take us back to the AI model section. And I assume that soon what's going to happen is when you click that, it will start the pop up. But it looks like this is in an iterative process at the moment. So again, um, what we've done is we've gone to this model section. At the top here, it says create text, uh, summarize documents and more with GPT. If you select that, you're going to get this pop up. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to see loads of different uh, iterations or just create um, a custom task with custom prompts. So if you select that and scroll down, you'll see create custom prompts. And this is where you're going to be able to create your own prompts. And what you can actually do then is you can select a starting template and it will pre-populate this little area for you. Or alternatively, you can just start typing and create your prompt. But before you do anything like that, you're going to want to click this top bar up here and name your prompt. So we'll just call it example prompt. Um, so what we can then do is we can start creating our prompt. So if you click on this template section here, you'll get a list of seven different uh, iterations that you can uh, use. Like you've got summarized text, you've got classified text if you wanted to say you've got a load of different type of animals and you wanted to classify it into uh, animals and vehicles and stuff like that right you can do that with this classified text um, but then you've got summarized text you can take a large bit of text and then summarize it well what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to actually create a prompt yourself and then i'm going to go back and use a template to go through how you do the testing and all of that so let's start with actually creating a prompt then well, you could say, okay, well, let's say I've got a lot of data coming in and I want to summarize that data. So you're getting data from Dataverse or someone's passing you data, you're getting data from somewhere. You're gonna have a large chunk of data and you want to summarize that. So I'm going to say, I want a summary of the text and then I'm going to have an input of text, right? So if I click on dynamic value, it's going to have this little pop up here and it's going to say name your input. So this is where the text is going to be passed into. Now, if I say input text and then I click off of it, it's going to disappear. Now, what you need to remember with this is you need to press return or enter on your keyboard 
or it won't be added. So if you say input text and then press return, you're going to then have it added to your text. And as you can see here, you now have an input text uh, variable that a parameter like that you can actually use, right? So you've got a value that you can actually pass in. So now I've got, I want a summary of the text and the input text. And then what you can do is you can then add something else like um, uh, as uh, listed um, in an, let's say, hmm, let's say an eighth grade level. So now it's going to make it um, at a lesser reading level uh, so that you can keep everything consistent, right? Now, this looks great and you've got a prompt and you can do this and you can work around it, you can reword it and all that type of stuff. And then you can add more dynamic values. And that is how easy it is to create your own custom prompt. But let's go through the actual process of having a fully created prompt then and just use a template to show us how um, to actually test it and how it works and how we go through the saving process. So I will choose the summarized text because that's kind of like the example that we used. And when you click on it, you can see here, look, it says summarize and then text to summarize. So it's created that prompt that we just created. And then in a fewer than two paragraphs, it's uh, saying don't add any additional information, summarize it as an eighth grade level. As, I, as you can see, I've obviously looked at this previously. And then it says like when the text is too short and it gives you basically this whole entire prompt. And now you can modify this if you want to, but what's really uh, important here is you understand what you're trying to achieve because all of this information that is provided, right? Like, um, it wants it uh, in fewer than two paragraphs and eighth grade level. Uh, if the text is too short, make, make it into at least one paragraph as a summary. All of that you're going to expect when you test this to come back. So if I click on this test your prompt down here, you can see the input, like the text to summarize and text to summarize, they match here. And then you can enter the information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my blog post where I've actually written a blog post about this. Um, so if, you're pref if you prefer text and you want to follow it along or get some of the uh, data that I'm using on here, uh, I'll put the link below in the description. But essentially I've got a, a list of all of this information and all of this information is grabbed from the Microsoft 365 Copilot announcement on the Microsoft blog. And it's around five paragraphs of all of the information about what M365 Copilot is. And it was the big announcement. Now it's quite a lot of text, right? So if I pass it into our prompt now, it should summarize it in less than two paragraphs and give me a summary without adding any in new information. So if I paste this into here, you can see it's quite a large um, chunk of text, right? So if I press test prompt now, what that's going to do is it's going to use the prompt that I've created, pass that information in, and then summarize it with all of the um, information around it. So like the two par less than two paragraphs, adding no information at an eighth grade level, etc. And as you can see here, we've got a nice, easy to read response. Um, it's easy to digest. It's not using complex language and it's not adding any new information. So that is how easy it is to actually create a prompt and test it. Now, if I decide, oh, okay, well, maybe I want it to split into bullet points as well or something like that, I can add that to, um, I can add that to my uh, prompt and then test it again. And I keep refining it. It's an iterative process. You keep going through the prompts until you're happy with it. Now, what you then want to do is you want to hit save custom prompt and this is going to go through and save the prompt. And once it's saved, you'll get a little notification at the top. It won't actually close this window for you. A little green notification up here will appear and it will tell you that basically the prompt has been saved and you can close this window. Now, when you do that, it's going to um, appear in the AI model section. So while we wait for this to save, um, we'll just, there you go. Uh, it says your custom prompt has been saved. You can access it from the models page. So if you uh, click X now, this is gonna close. But what is important to note is that you can actually use it in a flow or an app. As I mentioned before, it works on Power Automate, it works on Power Apps, and it also appears to be coming to Copilot Studio, uh, as I've seen this in there um, as a preview as well. 
So if I close this, uh, you can see the AI models down here and it says your example prompt. If I click on this, it's going to open the prompt for us, right? But as mentioned previously, uh, we we have the um, like the prompts in its own area. So if you click back onto this AI model section here, um, let's just wait for that to load. It says the prompts now have their own section. So if we go into there, we're now actually in the prompt section. You can see it's in uh, it's listed under my prompts. But if I go into shared with me, it's not listed there. But if I go into all prompts, it's listed um, with the shared stuff. So you've got your whole entire prompt library with all the shared stuff and your own ones. But if you want to share it, just like you do with a flow or an app, uh, a power app, you just go onto the three dots, click share, and you can type um, a group or a person's name or email and share it with them. And that is how easy it is to now create prompts in your own Power Platform prompt library using the AI Builder on Power Automate, Copilot Studio, and Power Apps. Thank you for joining me on this video. If you found the information helpful, leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe if you want to see some more Microsoft technologies. I'll catch you on the next video.